Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I thought we would go over influenza. So I had my first influenza diagnosis in the ED last week. Um, it was a little kiddo. He came in with the chief complaint of headache, actually. Um, I go in, find out that he's having fevers. A lot of other kids at school are staying home. We don't know why. Um, I was like, well, let's get a flu on him because it's the beginning of flu season. He's having fevers. A lot of other kids are at home having fevers. Um, and he's complaining of um, a lot of body aches. So got a flu on him. He was influenza B positive. And I was like, wow, it's my first case this year. So I thought it would be a good idea to refresh everyone on influenza. So let's get started. So when it comes to human influenza virus, there is type A and B. Um, and those are the ones that cause the majority of infections. Type A will have a more severe disease course. Um, when it comes to transmission, these patients are going to be transmitting influenza from one person to the other with droplets. So you're going to want to put these patients on droplet precautions. Um, so that just means a normal mask when you go into the room, have your patient wear a normal mask. Um, and it's usually droplet precautions are usually um, anyone within six feet radius of them. Um, so try to stay out of their face if you can. If you can't, you obviously usually have to look at their throat, make sure you're wearing a mask and make sure they have a mask on when you're in the room. Um, when it comes to viral shedding, these patients are usually shedding the virus 24 to 48 hours before their symptoms start. So that means they are possibly contagious one to two days before they even start to have symptoms. And then the average shedding um, for an adult is 6.4 days. Um, I like to give these patients um, five to seven days off from school and or they are asymptomatic before I like let them return to school and or participate and go back to normal um, human interaction. When it comes to the clinical manifestations of the flu, these patients are going to come in with an abrupt onset of uh, fevers, body aches, malaise, fatigue, um, and they are going to actually think of it as so abrupt it actually started at a certain time. Um, patients usually remember, oh gosh, I was feeling great, and then all of a sudden at 3 p.m. I started feeling terrible. Um, that is pretty classic of the flu. Um, kids can present uh, with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, kind of like a GI issue picture in up to 20% of cases. And then um, a, a lot of patients usually have post um, flu asthenia. So they will have uh, weakness and or easily fatigable for up to a couple weeks after they have the flu. When it comes to the complications of the flu, um, you probably guessed it, pneumonia is the most common complication. Um, this pneumonia can be a secondary bacterial infection or it can be a primary influenza pneumonia. Obviously, the secondary bacterial infection is going to be more common here. Other complications are more common in children like otitis media and rhabdomyolysis. Obviously, if you have any type of complications, um, it's going to be an individual that is more prone to getting these things. So the very young, the elderly, uh, patients with comorbidities, patients with lung disease especially, and pregnancy patients. So this is a picture of a man one week prior and one week later who had influenza pneumonia. So even though this is a little more rare than the bacterial pneumonia, it is nothing to be taken lightly. The first picture shows poorly defined nodular paces and small areas of consolidation in right middle and lower lung zones. Um, chest radiographs one week later demonstrates extensive bilateral consolidation and poorly defined nodular opacities. Also noted are the endotracheal tube and central vena this line. So when it comes to the treatment options for the flu, all treatments are best given if it's been less than 48 hours since symptom onset. Um, the most common treatment is Tamiflu and in adults this is 75 milligrams twice a day for five days. Um, there's a different pediatric weight-based dosing um, and then there's Rolenza which is the inhalation, inhalation treatment. Um, this is less commonly used because of different age restrictions, and it's also contraindicated in patients who have lung disease. Um, and then there is a new flu medicine out that's called Zofluza. Um, 
And this was FDA indicated for treatment of the flu in October 2018. So last year just became FDA indicated. And um, as of October 2019, so this month, it just became FDA indicated for treatment of the flu in high risk individuals. So those high risk individuals that kind of already brushed over, that's going to be your very young, your very old, your elderly, um, comorbidities, any type of lung disease or pregnant patients. And Zofluza is a one time dose. Um, so you don't take it over the course of many days. So if you're ever worried about a patient um, who cannot take something over many days and or won't finish it, then Zofluz is gonna be your best bet. You can give it to them right there. So it's a one-time dose. Um, it's usually 40 milligrams if the patient weighs between 40 and 80 kilograms, and it's gonna be 80 milligrams if the patient weighs more than 80 kilograms. And then there's other treatment options that have been used in the past. Um, the amantadines, um, usually uh, not used in the United States because of high resistance rates. Um, I have rarely seen someone use that, um, but there are specific indications if you want to look them up. Um, but usually Tamiflu and or Zofluza now are going to be your first lines. So lastly, when it comes to the prevention of the flu, um, you're gonna wanna start thinking about preventative measures and any individual who is at risk for having adverse reactions to the flu. Um, so any cardiac patients, diabetes, um, any immunocompromised patients, and the elderly. And the best form of prevention is the flu vaccine. Um, urge all individuals who are at risk for adverse reactions to the flu to get the flu vaccine. Also, if you have a high-risk individual who has come in contact with someone with a known flu case, then you can preventatively give them um, Tamiflu. The dosing is a little different in prevention. It's 75 milligrams once a day for 10 days. Um, and if they start to develop flu-like symptoms, you just move the dosing to twice a day. Um, but you can definitely give preventative Tamiflu. Uh, nothing really is no other medications really indicated for the prevention of flu other than Tamiflu. Tamiflu is the most common one. Um, so you can give this preventatively in your high-risk patients, and some providers actually do it in the regular population, population if uh, they become in contact with someone with the flu. So that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope this was a quick review of the flu. Um, please consider an anyone at this time during this flu season that has a fever, um, body aches, and it was abrupt onset, and if it's within uh, 48 hours, because it's not within 48 hours, why test them? Because you can't even treat them. Alrighty, guys, see you next week.